thank you for uh, invitation and thanks uh, for giving me time. My name is Reza Nejalati. I am professor at the University of Bristol in UK. Uh, I am also a Cisco chair and uh, what I'm going to present today, um, uh, a synergy and a mutual benefit that six and quantum internet can bring to for each other. Um, so the topics I want to discuss is uh, first of all, what is quantum internet is uh, not very well defined at least uh, I show you uh, from my perspective and then um, opportunities and benefits for next uh, next year, whatever it is I, or six year, whatever it is. And then uh, challenges for realizing that. Uh, I very briefly go to these three topics in next 10 minutes. So before I start quantum internet, I uh, share with you what is quantum bit. If you know classical bit is about the zero and one, either zero and one, but quantum bit can be superposition of the zero and one and can have a probability of, uh, when you measure it, can be a, one probability, one or another probability, zero, which is some of the probabilities of obviously is one. So uh, so there would be a superposition of the zero and one, but with the different probabilities. And when you measure it, it's collapse to one of the states. So the why is good for us as a telecom or uh, looking next year, first of all, you cannot clone it. So if you cleverly play with it, you can use it for security. So quantum mechanic theory says that is non-clonable. So a quantum bit cannot be cloned. So that's important feature for the security. So nobody can uh, listen or listen to it, cannot copy it. The, the other important feature is entanglement. So, uh, uh, or what they call, Einstein call it spooky action at distance. So it means it's possible that today's we can generate it in my lab, we can generate it. We can generate two photons that are entangled. We can put them at distance. And then when you measure one of them, the other one immediately collapse uh, to the same measurement step. So, so it means that uh, you can transfer potentially information faster than the speed of the light at the distance. So that's, we call it entanglement uh, 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 or a spooky action at distance. So this is important for creating a, a quantum network for information transmission. So let's look at the application with respect to quantum internet. If you have a non-cloning pro property of the quantum information, then you can use it cleverly for quantum security. So nobody can listen to it. You can safely transmit data using quantum transmission. Then if you have a superposition of a state means that a one bit can have a two state of the one and zero at the same time. It gives you a powerful capability for quantum computing. And then superposition of a set in quantum bits are very much affected by environment at uh, both micro and mi micro level. So then you can use it to create very, very accurate sensing. So quantum sensing. And then if you have an entanglement, you can use it to distribute information, create a clever uh, networking mechanism using this, uh, these capabilities. I go a little bit uh, into that, the benefits of this, uh, for capabilities for 6G. Well, 6G needs the security and 6G needs a power efficiency. So with the uh, quantum, <laughs> quantum almost commercial, we need to be able to uh, find a way to transmit information that are secure against the quantum computer, powerful uh, uh, code breaking capability, potential code breaking capability. So one way is to use quantum security using the photon at the quantum uh, level and then transmit informa key information. So that's become quantum security. The other is that what mathematician and cryptographer are doing do the post quantum cryptography, meaning that developed a very complex mathematical uh, cryptography uh, algorithms that are immune to the quantum uh, processors. But uh, the, the right hand one or the latter one, post quantum cryptography comes at the cost of the very powerful computing power or a very energy hungry computing. So quantum uh, security can potentially be cheaper and more energy efficient, significantly more energy efficient than post quantum cryptography if you want to look at the security of the next generation network. That's one way. The other is quantum computing. Quantum computers, I mentioned to you, it works with the multi-state of the quantum bits and the states are uncertain as you realize, but pretty much random. 60 environment are, it has a lots of uh, uncertainty at various level from user to service to the spectrum. 
A spectrum of sensing, for example, is or calculation is very uncertain or random uh, uh, phenomena. So you quantum machine learning applied quantum computer are very good to solve uncertain problem. So quantum computing for for 6G network management and network control is really attractive proposition. The other thing is that uh, uh, when quantum computers nowadays, we can see that various commercial version of them are becoming available. You must be able to provide them in your next generation network as a service uh, to your user. I mean, you have to provide kinds of quantum cloud computer and quantum data center where, uh, for example, uh, people like uh, uh, hyperscaler to provide massive computing power to uh, share to the multiple tenant and user via network. So this is also an uh, uh, application quantum computing for 60. Finally, if you have a, a, a quantum uh, level sensing, you can achieve very, very accurate uh, uh, sensing, uh, uh, especially if you distribute the sensor over long distance and connect them together. Distributed quantum sensing can, can really achieve order, uh, uh, multiple order of magnitude more accuracy and resolution than the best, the best sensing technology available at the classical domain. You can use for very accurate high resolution spectrum sensing for cell free operation, for example. You can use, use it for highly accurate synchronization or atomic clock for clock distribution for cell synchronization or mobility synchronization. You can do very highly accurate uh, localization GPS free. So you can have a very, very accurate uh, at nanometer scale accuracy uh, with the G GPS independent uh, 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 and GPS independent location uh, localization with your quantum sensors. So if you comp uh, combine a quantum security, quantum computer, and quantum sensing, which you see on your left hand side, with a quantum network, which is made of entanglement and support dynamic quantum bit uh, transport and provide the mechanism that multiple users can access that. Essentially, you provide a distributed quantum sensing. You can create a quantum data set and quantum cl cloud computing can create a basic building blocks that are required to support some of your advanced 60 services. Now let's go a little bit to challenges that. If you want to create a, a distributed quantum computing, distributed quantum sensing and make it accessible to user, you need to create a quantum network. The, uh, the most uh, practical way nowadays to transmit quantum information using the photons, because it's easy to transmit photon either over fiber or free space. But then also uh, you can manipulate the photon to behave at the quantum level. And also you can easily entangle them. When I say easily is uh, relatively easy compared to other technologies. So and uh, in commercially viable way you can do that. But the challenges, uh, quantum uh, signal uh, uh, behave at a single photon level and by definition become very, very weak signal. And if you want to transmit it either free space or over fiber, you need to find a way how you manage it before it disappear either through other classical channel or through the various uh, attunation or other problem in your transmission channel. The other thing is that you need to be able to create an entanglement to distribute your sensing, distribute your computing and connect multiple users to your network. That's also another challenge to, to create it. So quantum uh, uh, repeater is another one uh, challenge. If you want to go to long distance with your quantum information, you need to create a quantum amplifier and repeater, which is at the moment, that's the most challenging part among all these challenges I am mentioning. It still is, is on theory and no practical solution available for it. So in UK, if I want to show you, we are building a na national wide uh, uh, a quantum network for these purposes I mentioned for security, for computing and for sensing. And it's basic goes from East coast of the UK to West coast of the UK. Please bear in mind UK distance is 600 miles is coast to West coast, not the U US distance. But there is a, is a, nevertheless, a, there is a single line of the fiber goes from East Coast to the West Coast. Uh, East Coast is a Cambridge, which is University of Cambridge. And um, uh, there and uh, on West Coast, we have a University of Bristol, which is my university. And both cities, we are building the, our uh, metro quantum networks. 
which is connected to various telecom infrastructure, including 5G at the moment, as you can see. So the, I have zoomed out for you, Bristol uh, uh, Mesh Quantum Network, which is the center of city of Bristol. You can imagine the city is very similar to Boston, if people from US, uh, and then uh, with the same sort of geography, uh, we are creating a mesh network there, which is support the quantum, dynamic quantum networking and entanglement networking for various services, including 5G. So the, uh, now the challenge is that to create a, a dynamic switch uh, quantum network. So uh, what we have built is that uh, we develop in my group a switching uh, infrastructure. You can see based on the free space optical switches that can connect, basically switch any input uh, signal coming from any input fiber with the thin line of the blue shows and going any output fiber at the quantum and uh, classical channel is assumed that every fiber carries both quantum and, uh, quantum and classical channel. It can switch from any input port to any output port. That's the word first we show that and we install it in the city and can dynamically switch the quantum and classical channels. The other thing is that we want to uh, run these services with the normal traffic and using the same fiber that carries the internet traffic. So putting the quantum and classical channel in the same fiber is a big challenge. We found that the only way that we can do the spectrum management using machine learning, we have developed various machine learning techniques that can basically does the spectrum management for quantum and classical channel. That's some lesson that we learned and that's being used more or less everywhere else. The other thing is that to be able to connect two quantum computers in our network, we need to create an entanglement network. So we have to develop entanglement source and a network that can distribute the entangled photons to these uh, devices to connect them together. So what we have done, we have developed a broadband entangled for, uh, source at the uh, left-hand side you see is relatively cheap broadband uh, source that creates uh, over the uh, w, uh, over a fiber spectrum or, or a single mode fiber spectrum or C-band, a multiple wavelength channel that are pairwise entangled together. And then we can basically distribute, uh, if we want to, for example, entangle node A and B in this figure you see in the middle, we can basically configure our switch to distribute lambda one and lambda minus one are entangled together to A and B. So A and B become entangled together and any information BAM node B measures, node A the same uh, uh, instantly receive it or measure it. So we found out that to, to be able to create an eight node of this and with a 30 wavelength in our city is too complex. We have a 10.5 million scenario to configure and adjust and parameter to adjust. We have to develop a deep neural network to control this mechanism and deep neural network is being used at toolbox with various quantum network across the world at the moment. So we have managed to create an eight node with 30 wavelength that they can dynamically establish the entanglement relationship with each other. To conclude my talk, quantum internet uh, provides critical features for 6G. One is the quantum computing power is suitable for our centrality problem of 6G, ultra accurate distributed sensing, unbreakable security, does are important and energy efficient one. There is a realistic prospect for building dynamic switch quantum network for 60. We have the monastery city of the Bristol in UK, but uh, we can make it in large scale as well. There is a realistic pro prospect for that. It seems that machine learning for control of such a network is important, but also there are problems to address. It's very difficult to go beyond a small city scale. For long distance distances, you need to uh, solve a lot of issues, including fidelity of your entanglement and quantum source and receiver and also uh, how you can uh, interface your quantum sensor and computer to a network. Bear in mind why quantum sensor and quantum computer works in completely different wavelength and frequency than a, a photon uh, uh, wavelength or optical uh, transmission wavelengths. So uh, converting them from microwave to, uh, to the optical is a big challenge uh, without losing your coherence. So these are the uh, remarks I wanted to make. Thank you very much.